The day of the Good Shepherd is a time that helps us understand that you, Jesus, are truly our shepherd. At this moment, because of the war, we celebrate this holy day in hiding. We gaze at the picture depicting Jesus, the Good Shepherd, holding a lamb in his arms and a staff in his hand. Each of us is carried by Jesus to be saved from the wolves. The bombs and the bullets flying over our roof are the wolves. We suffer, and though the war surrounds us, we are on the road to the Good Shepherd. In April 1994, in the heart of Africa, genocide took place on an unprecedented scale. Little Rwanda became an arena of slaughter where the more numerous Hutu tribe murdered nearly a million Tutsis. Neighbors, friends, members of the same family became enemies overnight. Within a hundred days, 800,000 people lost their lives, whilst many more millions were forced to flee and to hide. Even the habit proved no defense against persecution. Despite up to 60% of Rwanda's population being Catholic, novices from the convent of the Good Shepherd engaged in helping the needy in the vicinity of the capital, Kigali, were to find the consequences unexpectedly painful. The Canadian sisters were forced to leave Rwanda shortly after the conflict began. Meanwhile, 25 novices remained in the home, 12 Hutu and 13 Tutsi. They endeavored to live a normal life in spite of the conflict raging all around them. They continued full of faith and love for their fellow human being to support those downtrodden by fate. Yet the war did not spare them. We pray for all those unable to praise the Lord. We pray for the soldiers forced to fight, for the wounded, for the orphans, the refugees, for those who have to hide in the jungle. We pray for all who live in these inhuman times. Their deep faith enabled the Rwandese novices to survive for so long. Every day was a battle for survival. Death was all embracing and often stared the sisters in the face. Around midday, a foreign soldier shattered the calm that had survived in us through the night and the morn. He looked angry and very hungry. He was abusive and demanded a chicken. He had come to ask us which tribe we belonged to. He even asked a child, not even 10 years old, are you a Tutsi? The boy did not, however, know his tribe of origin. The soldier threatened us that if there were any Tutsis under our roof, he would burn the whole house down. Sister Beata gave him 10 eggs to appease him. Members of the militia returned in the morning with soldiers. They demanded identity documents. Hutu were separated from Tutsi, and preparations were made to kill the Tutsis. Everybody began to pray. Hutu on one side with Tutsi on the other. There was a man amongst the Hutu who got up and continued to pray. A militiaman was perplexed by his prayer and held a grenade to his face. The man, however, continued. The militiaman was impressed by his prayer and they finally decided to leave. They were impressed by his prayer and finally decided to leave. 